Hello there! Are you ready for some heavenly crafts? Well, sort of. We've been talking about heaven this week, and our passage that we're focusing on is Revelation 21, where God gives us some beautiful promises, reminding us that he will make all things new, that there will be no more tears or sorrow or sadness, that all of the disease and pain will go away, and that wonderful new things will take their place. Anyways, we have two crafts that we're going to make that follow this theme somewhat. Now, today's crafts are a little bit different than what you might typically expect. You might need a few extra supplies and it might take a little extra time, but we're going to have fun with it. The first thing that we're going to make, well, it's actually pretty simple. We're going to make some hankies because this will remind us that, yes, we have tears now, but one day God will wipe away all of our tears. So this is really pretty simple, and there are some different angles that you can take on it. Now, you can just go to the store and buy some hankies or whatever. You, they've got those kinds of things. Or scarves. These are sort of more scarves that I have here. Or even bandanas would do the job. Or if you don't have that and you just have some regular cloth or felt or something lying around, well, that could work. I mean, I don't recommend the paper tissues. It's not quite going to work for what we're doing. But... Any kind of cloth will do. So what we're going to do is we're going to decorate this. Now, obviously, for the sake of timing, I'm not going to go all out and decorate every last bit of this, but I'll just kind of show you some of, we'll do kind of a half of it so you can get the idea. So you can, if you have Sharpies or fabric markers, fabric markers work very wonderfully for this kind of thing. You can write on it with that. So I might write something like, I could write the verse reference, Revelation 21, and I could write, we may cry sometimes. One day, God will wipe our tears. Something like that. Now, you could also write this on a piece of paper and attach it as well. Something like, God makes all things new. I could attach that. That was just the sound of my marker rolling off the counter in case you heard something strange there. Um, if you wanted, you could even add some extra decorative elements and attach this to the end of your hanky if you want something dangling off of it or maybe you want to make a little gift tag if you are handing this to someone giving it as a special gift a special reminder that we might have sad times we might need tissues now but someday someday we'll be in a place where we do not need tissues that's just an extra little option for you um and i'm going to go ahead and tie this label on um you can also add, if you have fabric or cloth like this, stickers are probably not going to work. You can give it a try, but they're not really going to stay stuck, especially if it's something you're actually using as a hanky and you want to wash it. But that's an option. But then you can also put on, I've got some little jewels here that I'm going to use my handy dandy tacky glue to attach. Don't ask me why I just put a red one on a red fabric. That wasn't the smartest idea, but hey. Um, so we're going to put on our jewels and you can add, um, if you've got puffy paint, you could even use puffy paint on this. Of course, then you have to wait for it to dry before you can give it to someone or take it home, but you get the idea. And then if you wanted to hang this and make it a decoration instead of an actual hanky, another reason for having the string there, which you could apply the string in other ways as well. But idea is that we have our lovely comforting reminder that even though we can feel sad and need hankies now, 
one day, God makes all things new. And who knows, maybe this could turn into a bandana for your dog too. At any rate, it's going to be a helpful reminder that we have hope in heaven, even though we have sorrows now. So, that is craft number one, our heavenly hanky. We'll go with that. Craft number two, this is one that is great to do at home if you have an at-home crowd. Now, if you're teaching Sunday school in a church, in a church classroom kind of a setting, you can still do this. There are a couple of options, though, for you to accomplish the task. What we are doing is we are going to make some crayons. Yes, we are going to make some crayons. So this is going to go with the idea that God makes all things new, that he takes our brokenness and our sorrow and, well, really, he's going to kind of refresh and replace it with something completely new. But we're going to take something that's old and tired and turn it into something new as well. So for this, you're going to need some crayons. Now, this is great to do with crayons that are old, with ones that maybe have been broken apart, they've lost their wrappers, they've kind of just dwindled down to the little nubbins, and there's not really that much left. It might seem like the only hope for these crayons is to go in the garbage, but wait, that's not the only hope because you can make some fabulous multicolored crayons out of them. So, you've got your crayon pieces. Now, there's a couple of things that you can use to do the making part of this. You can use a silicone mold if you have one that is oven safe for sure. Now, sometimes they have these in fun shapes. This is a little gingerbread man shape. Or you might even find them in like the letters of the alphabet and you can make alphabet crayons. Or if you do not have that or you don't want to use it, you can also just use regular cupcake liners. I would double these up because the wax and the oil does tend to kind of pull a little and it could leak into your cupcake pan. But, um, but you can use cupcake liners. You can go straight into the cupcake pan, but it will leave some waxy residue. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to take your crayons. Now you will need to make sure they're fully unwrapped. I happen to have already unwrapped these ones uh, because it takes a while to unwrap. And it's kind of like skinning cats in a way. Um, I have actually done that. It was an anatomy class project. That's another story. But anyway, so you're going to want to make sure that all of your wrappers are off of your original crayons. And if they're not already broken, you can just snap them into pieces. They don't have to be tiny pieces, but, you know, kind of less than an inch. So snap your crayon into pieces. And then you will put these lovely pieces in to your cupcake liner in your cupcake pan. Hey, we match. Anyways, um, so you'll put these pieces in and I mean, there's different ways that you can do it. You don't have to have it extra super full because we're not going for a thick crayon. We're just going for something colorful. So you're just going to plop your pieces into your liner. In fact, I could probably break these down a little bit more. Breaking the crayons, breaking the crayons. There we go. And once you've got them broken into pieces, here's the part where you have options if you're in the Sunday school setting. If you're at home, it's easy. If you're at Sunday school, well, you could make this into a fun project. If you have an oven nearby, you could take a little class field trip and put your crayons into the oven and then come back and get them later and wait for them to cool before you take them home. Or if you don't have easy access to an oven, this is a little bit more work on the teacher's part, but you can have the kids make their crayon molds and put some sort of a name label on it. Then you transport it home or to the church oven and you bake it and then bring it back the next week. Yes, there is delayed gratification there, but that's just another option. So once you've got your cupcake liners all taken care of with crayons or your mold, whatever it is that you're using, you're going to put them in a low oven, somewhere maybe about 250. Could be a little higher if you want them to go faster. Could be a little lower if you don't want it to get too runny or bubble up. But 250 seems to do the trick. So you're going to put your crayons into that heated oven. Not for very long, depending on how many you have and how thick they are. Really, you're only looking at maybe like seven to eight minutes. Ten at the max if you have a very low oven or not very well working oven, or you have a lot of crayons that you're making. But you're going to put that in there. 
And through the magic of television and preparing ahead of time, I just so happen to have the final product here. So once you finish, you're going to let the crayons cool off, obviously, because they'll be pretty, pretty wet and melty when they first come out. And then, of course, you either are going to remove your cupcake liners or take them out of the cupcake liners or remove them from the silicone pole. Yes, I'm sneaky. I had one in there. And I'm going to take it out. And then you see where it is really pretty fun if you have that mold because then you have fun little crayon shapes. Ta-da! And it's still kind of fun if you have the crayon cupcakes, but it's not quite as shapely, if you will. Um, so you've got your wonderful little crayons here. And now you are free to go to town and use them. Once you get all that wax out of the way there. So you'll use it just like a regular old crayon and it's gonna be different on different parts of it depending on what the colors are. But it's kind of fun to just play around with. And voila, there you have something new out of something that was old and tired. All things will be made new. We'll have fresh chances, new opportunities. So. It is a really fun, cool treat because kids can pick their colors and look at how the colors will swirl and redevelop. And is it a little bit of work? Yes. Peeling those wrappers off alone will take a little bit of time. But it's fun. It's adventurous. It's different. It's exciting. It's an option to remember that all things will be new and that heaven is our ultimate hope. So have fun with those. Rearrange them. Do something of your own. Feel free to tweak, adapt, but don't forget to come back next week because we have new crafts and children's messages all the time for you to work with your audience in your ministry with whomever, wherever, whatever that might be. Hopefully this is a blessing to you and hope to see you again. Well, I won't see you, but you know, you'll see me, something like that. At any rate, go make some crafts, make some disciples, have a great week. See you next time.